Judah realizes himself, oh, I am a great sinner. So he seeks forgiveness, which is a greater sin. Only to be jealous or commit fornication. Committed fornication, God doesn't become angry. No doctrine, no moral. What is the moral here? And the Christian don't want to answer it. According to the standards of the Bible, the Bible does not fit to be the word of God. And this is not the one case there. If you read the book of Genesis, chapter number 19, verse number 35, there is a case of incest. Even this is an incest. What is an incest? Incest means illegal sexual relationship between close blood relatives, like the father and the daughters, brothers and the sisters, sons and the mothers. If you read Genesis chapter number 19, verse number 35, there is a case of incest between daughters seducing their father. They give the father, father Lot, Luth alayhi salam, according to the Bible, they imbibe him with intoxication and then the eldest daughter, she commits fornication with her father. She says, there is no man here and she commits the fornication. Then what she does is, she encourages the younger sister and she says, my sister, why don't you also try the same thing? Tonight, you make our father drink and then you have the sexual intercourse with her. Book of Genesis, chapter number 19, verse number 35. Book of Genesis, chapter number 35, verse number 22. Between mother and the sons. Book of 2 Samuel. Between brothers and the sisters. There are cases of incest altogether in the Old Testament. I am asking, does God speak these things to his people? What is the doctrine there? What is the moral there? And the answer is, you see, this is mentioned in the Bible so that other people don't do it. I mean, as a father, I honestly ask my Christian friends, as a father, as an elder brother, as a husband, would you allow your women at home to read these stories? Would you allow them that they should believe that the prophets of God were people who committed incest. And I challenge Pastor Ranjit of here, I challenge him to read out slowly in simple English from the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 23, not all the verses, only verse number 3, verse number 8 and verse number 20 and 21. I challenge him to read it out to the audience here. Book of Ezekiel, chapter number 23, verse number 3, verse number 8, verse number 20, and verse number 21. Not more, not less. I challenge him to read it out. And I'm sure if he's a decent person, he will never read it out. Therefore, I believe that the Bible cannot be the God's word. Moreover, there are versions of the Bible. Versions. What are versions? So the Christian friend tells us, and I'm sure Pastor Ophir will do it in his speech. He has brought two different translations of the Quran. So he's going to say, this is a version of the Quran. This is a version of the Quran. But no, sir, they are not versions of the Quran. They are only different translations of the Quran. What is the difference between a version and a translation? The difference between a version and a translation is Translation can be done by the translators By selecting different choice of words Words can be different A different translator selects a particular word And he translates it But what is a version? According to the Oxford Dictionary Version means The change in the original language The change in the original language That is a version and the Bible has undergone several changes in the originals the first King James version believed to be by the Protestants to be the authorized version of the Bible as though it was the revealed Word of God was first printed in 1611 the version came after that 1881 Another version came after that, 1952. Another version, 1971. 
another version 1980s by now pastor will be in a better position to say how many versions have come and yet and yet the christians believe the word of god has not been changed i'll give an example the great 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 grandfather of a pastor writes a will and the great great grandfather of the pastor changes that will and the testament and the grandfather makes another major change in that will and the testament and the father he makes another major change in that testament and will and this person also makes another major change in that will yet he believes that what he has as the will today is the same that was laid down by his great 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 grandfather wallah we muslims take a very serious notice of making the message of the quran to be protected i challenge any christian who is here i challenge not offensively but educationally i challenge any christian sitting here including pastor ofir to read out all the names of the books given in the bible alhamdulillah my daughter only eight years she read out all the surahs in the quran and when to end so falaq from 113 so naas from 114 we take a serious note to protect the revealed message of allah subhanahu wa taala and if you honestly analyze the quran allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned very clearly in the quran in surah ali imran surah number 3 and number 78 with which i started my talk allah subhanahu wa taala says and among them among the jews and the christians are some people who distort the book so that you think that this book is from the book whereas it is not from the book wa yaquluna huwa min indillah and they say about allah wa yaquluna huwa min indillah wa ma huwa min indillah and they say this is from allah whereas it is not from allah wa yaquluna ala allah al kadhiba and they say about allah a lie wa hum yalamun and they know it very well to conclude the talk i leave it to pastor ofir to make clear why moses may peace be upon him wrote his own obituary obituary you know the stone that is put on the grave before dying he wrote it down and it is still revealed from god then i would like to know what are the morals of those lessons in the bible not according to your interpretation sir i want the interpretation from the bible where is the correction and morals given in the bible for those lessons and third can you god use that dirty filthy b a s t a r d word and fourth i leave the challenge open to you so that the people know the bible that you read as the word of god if you have taken up the challenge to read out the book of ezekiel chapter number 23 verse number 3 verse number 8 verse number 20 and verse number 21 so that all the people sitting here the christians and the non christians know what the word of god is i hope i concluded very well for you to assimilate the points wa akru dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin that was brother imran president i r e f presenting his talk for the first 30 minutes now i request pastor ranjit ofer to present his talk for 30 minutes pastor ranjit ofer each and every one of my brothers and sisters sitting here my christian brothers and sisters and muslim brothers and sisters sitting here in the name of my lord and savior jesus christ namaste praise the lord 
السلام علیکم تھینک یو ویری مچ فسٹ آف آل آئی وانٹ ٹو اپریشیٹ دا پریزنٹیشن آف دا چلڈرن آف مائی بردر عمران اٹ واز سو ونڈرفل ٹو سی دوز چلڈرن لرننگ دا ورڈ آف گاڈ اینڈ بینگ براڈ اپ ان گاڈلی مینرس بائی دا بلیسڈ مدر اینڈ فادر and it is not a wonder little wonder that uh, the eldest daughter has such a wonderful memory power because my brother imran he is of no little intelligence he is a great brilliant man uh, at a very young age he he knows greek arabic and sanskrit and uh, all these languages so i appreciate i take it as a cause of pride that i can share this uh, platform along with my beloved brother, Brother Imran. And I thank uh, the IREF for giving me this uh, privilege of sharing this platform with Brother Imran. And I am really fascinated at his commitment for truth, commitment for uh, finding the real truth of God and following it and proclaiming it. I appreciate him. And I praise God for this wonderful opportunity given unto me. He has thrown before me some challenges and raised some questions which I can very well answer and explain. But if I do that, I will not be able to share with you what God has kept in my heart. So I will come to his questions at the end of my discourse. At the outset, I want to tell you that this is not a debate between a Christian and a Muslim. This is a debate between a Muslim and a Muslim. Because I consider myself a Muslim too. Thank you. I am a Muslim because Muslim is a person who practices Islam as the style of life. And Islam in Arabic means a life of total submission to God. And Mr. Imran is a person totally submitted to God's will. And I consider myself also a man totally submitted to do God's will. So you can call me a Christian Muslim or maybe I'm a Muslim. And... Uh, Abraham in the Bible, he offered his son as a sacrifice to the God Almighty. Intelligently, I'm avoiding, I'm avoiding the name of that son, you know. It, it will stir up another controversy. But that son, whoever it was, Abraham was willing to offer his son. So he was a Muslim. He was submissive to God's will. And the Bible says Jesus also was totally submissive to God's will. He came to do God's will, so Jesus also was a Muslim. I, I appreciate it and I confess it. And I tell all my Christian brothers and sisters, if you want to be a real Christian, you also have to be a real Muslim. Thank you. So, actually, there is no dispute. First of all, I want to emphasize on one thing, that such debates are the need of the hour. We need to have such debates. Many Muslim friends and Christian brothers also, they called me, they spoke to me over the phone and said, no, no, Brother Ranjit, you should not be engaging in these debates. The Christianity doesn't uh, uh, agree or allow or permit such debates. But this will stir up a communal riots, disturbances. No, no, not at all, not at all. This is not a quarrel. This is a discussion between two brothers. And in the Holy Quran, in the glorious Quran, I use that word consciously. In the glorious Quran, Surah number 5, verses 82 and 83, 
it is said that Christians are the closest in affection, in love to Muslims. For a Muslim, the most dreadful enemy or hostile enemy is the Jew. For a Muslim, the worst enemy is a Jew and a pagan, idolaters. But the closest relative and brother is the Christian. So my Christian brothers and sisters, you must know that we are here with our closest relatives. My Muslim brothers and sisters, I tell you, I come before you as your closest relative. I'm your brother speaking to you. Thank you very much. So there is no such tension here. We're all sitting here as brothers and sisters to share what I feel and hear what you feel. Now, why these debates? The need of the debate arises from a fact that intelligent questions have been raised by the scholars of both the religions, both the communities. I repeat, intelligent questions, intelligent objections have been raised by the scholars of both the communities regarding the other religion. Muslim scholars have raised many questions like the questions raised by my brother Imran right now. Many Muslim scholars, the great Ahmad Didat and other great Muslim scholars, they have raised many, many intelligent questions against the Bible are questioning the authenticity of the Bible. And Christian scholars have come up with intelligent answers also. And vice versa. Christian scholars have raised many intelligent questions about Islam and many Muslim scholars have come up with very good, convincing, intelligent answers. Christian scholars have questions about Islam. Islam has answers. Islamic scholars have questions about Christianity and they have answers. So there should be a common platform to talk like this. I want to hear your intelligent answers and share my intelligent answers. So together we can know the truth in a better way, in a deeper way and live closer to God. Such debates help to build up communal harmony rather than creating a communal right. Unless we are uncivilized, uneducated, uncivilized like that. No, no. We are all good people, civilized people. We are all the cream of the society. I'm excited to see this wonderful congregation. Each and every one of us is a gem of the society. So none of us is getting emotional. We are all enjoying this discussion. So, in a positive way, now, I will proceed to tell you 